dividend investing and dividend stocks. Brandon Gentile here. We have shown each month our asset allocation model and where we put all of our wealth. Now this is a very important, it's a quick one today, but it's a very important one to listen to because this is very important for the market we are in now and what we're about to go into. So we break down our six different quadrants and make it simple for ourselves to when we're looking at our assets and our allocations every single week when we are checking things, me, my wife, our team, we can easily see quickly where we are. And you can go to a couple weeks ago, at the beginning of every month, we show our asset allocation of our personal portfolio of where we have our assets. And we have that broken down into six chunks. We do not want to overcomplicate the process. Society has told us we must invest in one asset class, paper, stocks, and bonds traditionally. And again, this is, you know, this process that we've been doing for, you know, five, six, seven years now is we continually are doubling our wealth every year. Uh, on average compound annual growth. I mean, it's about 15x over the last six, seven years. So it's it's really been about double uh, every year on average. And it's because of this simple strategy as, as looking at it in chunks and diversifying outside of the one asset class and being in the six different asset classes. So this is why this is so important. Again, we personally have very little in the stock market right now. And, and that has proven to be an asset where you have some of the least control out of anything you could possibly invest in. Again, you have no control of the company. You have no management ability. Uh, you're not an insider. It, you have very little to do. You're not a, a US politician. Uh, you, you don't have anything. You have very little control. That's why I love the as other asset classes, whether it's commodities, gold, silver, Bitcoin, holding an oil well, owning it, uh, a business you control, real estate you control. You're the one that can then control that asset and you have the flexibility to do what you want when you want with it. And that's, again, the 10 investor controls from Robert Kiyosaki are something we'll do another a video on and how to decide what the best investment is for you, what, what asset class that gives you the investor controls and the most investor controls possible. That's why I love real estate because it gives you all 10 where not every asset class has that. And again, 2022 has shown to be a very volatile year, which we've expected for years. Quite honestly, I thought this would come years ago, and I think it's going to get much worse. I expect stocks to go down another 50%, up to 90%, quite honestly, from where we sit today. And that might seem insane to someone who's you know, not paying attention or someone who's even paying attention. That might seem very, very crazy. Uh, from all the research I've done for the last 10 years and from everything I see and where I sit and where, where I'm watching, uh, I'm going to get into invisible crashes here in a second. As you can see this picture below, and this is, again, this, this stealth, whether it's inflation and stealthily stealing your taxes or whether it's the market's crashing and you you just you can't see it with your, the naked eye. You, you look at the Venezuelan Boulevard and that has gone through the roof or the Zimbabwe uh, peso or what they call it, the Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe dollar 10, 12 years ago when they had their hyperinflation, that goes to a trillion dollars, uh, trillion dollar denominations. So people think, most people think like, oh wow, you're extremely wealthy then. Well, no, when you actually measure a thing against things of value, it's through the floor. It, it just flatlines and it's zero because it's worth nothing. It's not even worth the papers printed on. So that's why these invisible crashes happen and people can't see them. And I believe this is what's going to happen to stocks going forward. They may do it in dollar terms, like I said, but I do expect them to continue falling the dollar and dollar denominated assets, which is really the world over, uh, paper, anything paper, uh, any derivatives and stocks and bonds because you know emerging markets whatever it might be all these things going forward are going to have these massively volatile swings because they aren't tertiary assets or they're not primary assets they're tertiary they're derived from something else they're deriv derived from something of value uh, so again when you measure things uh, that are dollar denominated against oil against bitcoin against gold and silver against uranium they're most likely going to have an invisible crash and this will allow us to turn these other assets, so the oil, uranium, Bitcoin, gold, and silver, it'll, you'll be able to jump out of those when those are peaking and then jump into the stocks that are crashed. Uh, and they, again, they might not be crashed from a dollar perspective. They might look like they're going through the roof, but we'll know if they are measured against each other what's valued properly. And we'll be able to jump out of the thing that's overvalued into the thing that's undervalued. So hopefully that makes sense. Let me know if that makes sense. If you want more explanation on that below, please. Uh, again, we'll be able to jump out of these asset classes and buy very cheap, great dividend paying stocks as this decade progresses. And here is one of the, the most important things that we have to look at, which is uh, the Palo Alto home, the last, uh, what is this, 10 years versus Bitcoin. So you look at this chart and you see that the, the home value or the home price is going up, just up and to the right. It looks like, wow, this, this is amazing. The, 
in dollars is just going up and up and up. So like I must be getting wealthier if I'm owning one of these homes. But remember, the dollar is continually losing value because they print more of it, meaning that because they're counterfeiting that, that currency into existence, you have to then find more of those dollars to buy the same exact house. So the house hasn't changed. You don't have more beach frontage all of a sudden. You don't have more uh, view of the bay there. It's the same house. It's the same thing. It's just gone up. It takes more of those dollars to go find and, and acquire that house. So when you measure against Bitcoin, Palo Alto home prices in Bitcoin, look at that, just destroyed. So this is the invisible crash I'm talking about. Again, right here, the invisible crash is pictured above. It looks like the value is going up, but it's really only the price as measured against a hard asset like Bitcoin. So again, the price in dollars is going up. The price in the currency that's being destroyed, all currencies, is going up because it's getting worth less and less and less. So you have to find more of those dollars, more of those currency units to go buy that same thing. Where in Bitcoin, if you're holding Bitcoin, if you're holding a hard asset, or again, it could be gold and silver, it could be oil, it could be uranium, it could be wheat and corn. In the coming years, these commodities are going to destroy any dollar denominated assets. It, it just, that's, the, the, that's the cycle we're in. And uh, the, the governments, we know this because of all the videos. Go, please go check out other videos when we have when we talk about deflation, inflation. When we talk about the IMF saying we're going to do financial repression and we're going to print and debase currency. We're going to raise taxes. We're going to steal the people's wealth through inflation and destroy the currencies. They have to do it to pay off their own government debts that they've incurred to buy everyone's votes, to keep themselves in power and centralized power. They've been printing this currency to steal that wealth to then gain more control over the people. And again, we've done countless videos and countless blogs on this very topic. So, you, you know, I, I want to go insane right now because I just don't have the energy to do it right now, unfortunately. But this is the biggest scam in the history of the world. And it's all being used to take wealth from the poor middle class and to take it in the disguise of ESG or climate change or whatever it is and take that power and control and then make the poorest poor and the middle class poor and then use it for their own political gain and centralizing power. And yet we've talked about this at length. There's millions of books. Klaus Schwab writes about it himself in The Great Reset, Stakeholder Capitalism, The Great Narrative, uh, Glenn Beck's book, The Great Reset. All these people have talked and documented exactly. They've told us what they're going to do. And we have other people on the other side telling us and exposing what they're doing and then breaking it down even further. So this is, this is not a conspiracy. This is completely from their own mouths and then from onlookers uh, talking about it, researching it, and investing uh, more time into it to break it down for us. So we have to pay attention to what's going on because this is the most important thing going on right now. This I thought this was going to be gold and silver, which still is going to do a job probably, but I thought it was going to do a better job at making all the other asset classes look terrible, but it's been Bitcoin. Bitcoin was the, is the apex predator sitting in the, in the weeds like a tiger, like a lioness, sitting there waiting for its prey. And that's been the one, the silent killer that's been destroying every asset class over the last 12, 13 years. This is what is going to continue happening moving forward as the only finite asset in the world other than our time. So capital is going to continue flowing. I mean, it, it's inarguable at this point. We have BlackRock talking about it now. We have so many billionaires, Paul Tudor Jones, Stanley Druckenmiller, Bill Miller, just person after person getting into fidelity. I mean, person after person getting into Bitcoin and changing their stance because Bitcoin changes you. You don't change Bitcoin. It changes you. It's the apex predator, the laser eyes, destroying everything in its path. And it will continue to do this to every single person, to every asset class that doesn't believe in it. It will do it. All the experience that I have seen from the people I study, everyone has shown that over and over again, and it exposes people. It's a mirror. It, it, it reflects your, your good, the good about you and it reflects the bad. It makes some people go crazy and go ape, and it makes a lot of people see things even clearer. Intelligent investors invest for cash flow regardless of asset class. This provides us financial freedom and stability in a changing economy. There are times to buy for appreciation, but I generally always want to buy something personally for cash flow, whether it's stocks or real estate. When market liquidity crises, like now, rear their ugly heads, it, those in the, the positions that are unsustainable get exposed. Like the story of this year alone, people losing their assets left and right. I get calls every day about people losing their apartments and on the verge of losing their apartment complexes because they bought in hopes that things would appreciate. And they get stuck with an asset they couldn't pay for monthly. Cash flow provides financial stability and gives you the chance to ride out market volatility. You can get squeezed out of the market if you have no income coming in and you have only bought for appreciation and cannot handle the drawdowns on your stocks or maybe your rental units with no tenants in them paying off the mortgage. This is the phase two plan. This is where the dividend stocks and aristocrats and everything comes into play. The phase two plan for us. The dividend stocks are part of our phase two plan where the economy has gone off like we've talked about before in our portfolio allocation letters monthly. Again, go back and check those, one of those, please, if you're interested. In the beginning of each month, we do these. There's a phase two plan where the economy has gone off the cliff, like we talked about, whether it's a real crash, 
in nominal terms or it's an invisible crash. And we have our insurance payouts is what really what gold, silver, Bitcoin, all these are. Those pay off and we would lend against those assets. Maybe we sell some, but I'm a big believer in, in minimizing your tax consequence and lending against as much as possible because they continue having to print currency. Again, we know from Ben Bernanke's papers and the IMF, they're going to debase currency. They're going to make sure inflation happens and not deflation. Again, out of their own mouths, we've shared on our previous blogs, we've shared exactly their words and what they want to do. So we know they absolutely have to print more currency because if they don't, we go into deflationary depression, death spiral, de death spiral, done, donezo, every game over, half the world is wiped out immediately, every business collapse, the gas pumps stop working, credit cards stop working. So they don't want that to happen. Now, should that happen? That's a different story. Yeah, it probably should. We need to clean the world out. We need to clean the cancer out of the world. However, that won't happen because humans don't want that pain. They're going to try to, to just kick the can as far down the road as possible. So again, when these things pay off, we're going to lend against them and we're going to buy great dividend paying blue chip stocks. Corporate dividend aristocrats are awesome companies to own, but there are many great companies that slightly miss the aristocrat moniker that are excellent to own as well. Uh, and, and again, those are, there's, you know, they pay, some pay higher, some pay lower. Uh, and, and again, I like to be in a certain level and everyone has their own preference. Again, people are saying, like, well, what you have? It, it's your own preference, whether it's 5% dividend or 2%. You have to like the company, you got to like the balance sheet. And again, we'll get into this more as we, this was, I just wanted to touch on this and in, in the, really the dividend the stock uh, plan, the dividend aristocrat plan, as it pertains to taking your insurance payoff, taking your cash and putting it into dividend paying, cash flow paying stocks. And again, the other plan on top of this, which we actually didn't mention this article, is once you have those dividend paying stocks, you can then sell calls against it. You can then get into the options market and you can sell calls to, you know, 50% increases on your cash or double your cash payouts each month, your, your cash flow or, or, or triple them, just depending. So you can go in and accelerate your wealth by selling calls, selling puts to get in and selling calls on, you know, covered calls on, on your stocks that you have. Uh, that you own. So there's unbelievable ways to do this uh, and, and really accelerate your, your wealth going forward. The beauty of stocks is that you can get in and out very easily, even though you don't really want to, if possible, because again, that'll increase your capital gains taxes. We make money when we buy, and this is across every asset class. So buying at a great price is very important. And then we let it ride for as long as possible, compounding your efforts and reinvesting as much as possible, and increasing that cash flow. In general, we want to buy, buy blue chip companies at incredibly low unbelievable prices that provide minimum two and a half to three percent dividend payments, uh, dividend payouts or more. Dividend aristocrat stocks give you that confidence that they will continue to pay you cash low, uh, cash flow long term, I should say cash flow long term. However, there are many great dividend paying stocks that are up and coming, like I mentioned before, that will be in that crowd someday that pay even higher dividends currently. As we progress forward, we will continue giving you those investments that we are sharing in our portfolio and the wins and the learning lessons with you. So we'll get into more of those specifics later on in, in, in future videos. But again, this is I wanted to do more of a broad general uh, th thought uh, experiment and, and talk about the process and the thinking that goes into this. And again, if you want to know what a dividend aristocrat is, you know, here it is. You can, you can check this out. Uh, just quite briefly, it's a company in the S&P 500 index that not only consistently pays a dividend to shareholders, but annually increases the size of its payout. And it's, over at least the last 25 years, raising dividends at least 25 years. So you can you can look at this and check this out. Some um, some pointers and some tips, uh, not tips, but you know some the ways that they you know just kind of coin what the, the dividend aristocrats are. Uh, so that's there to help you as a little a brief guide. But again, please go check in those check those out and start preparing your plan. And this next part is again something that I've started recently. I think it really help you as well. This is a trading journal. One of the biggest things I started is a trading journal. And I really call it an investment journal because I'm not a trader. I'm not a day trader. I'm an investor. I'm a long-term investor. My time horizons are minimum, uh, you know, year, two years. I mean, minimum, minimum, minimum. Generally, five to 10 years in my investments. That's why we talk about Bitcoin a lot. It's five, 10, 20, 50-year, 100-year investments. So again, the investment journal, though, or people call it a trading journal, you want to go in there and jot down the trades you're making, the investments you're making, and what kind of emotion you had going into it. Anything you can think of, jot down in there. You know, take one page and, hey, this is the investment we're making. This is why we're making it. This is what I expected to happen. Uh, this is where I thought the market was going. And then, hey, what ended up happening? What, where, where did the market go? Why did that trade go right or why did it go wrong? You can go back and look and figure out and get, become a better uh, philosopher. You can become better at seeing where the markets are going and learning from your past mistakes. And again, these are super important. 
to be able to go back and review, as David Goggins would say, that after action report. You want to be able to go down, watch game film. When I was a kid, after watching, one of the things that helped me you know, play professional hockey was watching game film as a, as a kid all the time. My parents would videotape every game. We'd go back at the big over-the-shoulder VCR, you know, video camera, go in, pop the VCR, uh, tape in the VCR, and we go watch every game. After I got home, every game we go watch, and I go watch game film. That was just something I did my entire life, being a student of the game. And we have to do that in the investment world as well, and not outsourcing that to other people that, quite honestly, have no incentive to do it well for you, quite honestly, right? The government, I mean, they've showed Social Security, whatever it is, here, we gave us some money, and they've taken it as a currency, and they've just destroyed it. It's insolvent in five, 10 years. So they've taken your retirement, your wealth, and what you've paid in, and they've just squandered it on whatever, uh, buying votes, and, and taking it, and giving it, and redistributing it to other people, and now it's going insolvent, meaning you will get paid. You will still get paid. It will not go insolvent. You will still get paid your Social Security. Again, we have other videos on, these, on this as well. We have one that we did about Fidelity and Bitcoin, your 401k, and the, the joke that some of our senators put out there about the 401k, average 401k has 133 grand in it, and yet they still can't figure out that there's changes that need to be made, and they're telling you not to be in Bitcoin, but why would you keep doing the same thing if the last 50 years have only proved that 133 grand is the average what someone has in there? So again, whether it's Social Security, uh, whether it's 401k, it's tied to the stock market, your Social Security, same thing. They're going to keep printing currency. You're going to get it. But it's going to go insolvent. So meaning they're going to print the currency in order to pay you out what they owe you. But their liability, the, the governments will be a lot less because they'll just keep printing that currency new to them so they can pay you off. But now, you know, bread's going to be $10 a loaf. Gallon, a gallon of gas is going to be $10 a loaf. And then five, 10 years from now, it's going to be $20 a loaf, $30 a loaf, $30 a gallon of gas. So they're going to, you're going to get yours. Don't worry. Your social security, you'll still get a grand a month, two grand a month, three grand a month. But your cost of living is going to be five X. So that's that again, that goes back to this. This is the sneaky way that governments get you. They take your wealth. They don't own anything. They don't have any wealth, nothing. They have to take it from all of us to go pay off the people they're trying to get votes from, to go pay off the bondholders, the Chinese, the Russians, uh, the, the Mexicans, whoever it is, the Canadians. They have to go pay off all their bondholders, the people that they're taking, getting all this money from, and go pay off the interest and, and goes to all the people around the world, and then you get stuck with the bill at the end of the day. You now have to pay higher prices because now the, the goods and services are all now cost more because they printed so much currency. And the Fed's monetizing all of it. Again, printing more currency to buy the debt from the federal from the government. So the Fed's buying the government debt, and the Fed it enriches the Fed, whoever owns the Fed, the bankers, the Rothschilds, and on and on and on, the JP Morgan Chases of the world. They own all these central banks and the Federal Reserve and all the 12 FOMC members. And, and they enrich themselves. So you're paying, you're going to work each month, three, four, five months to pay your taxes to pay off the bankers because they're the ones that own the bonds on their balance sheet and you're the one paying the interest on that. That's our public national debt. That's the 31 trillion, that's what we owe. We owe that national debt, all those bonds get owed out to, like I said, people all over the world, the Federal Reserve, whoever has bonds on their balance sheet. So again, this is incredibly, incredibly important stuff. I, I can't stress this enough. This is kind of like the, the peeling back the layers, the wizard behind the curtains of what's going on. That's why this video is so incredibly important. So please, please share this with someone you think could, you know, is has a 401k, has a retirement coming up, their social security is worried about it. Please, uh, if you're worried about it yourself, please, again, take heed this advice. Please go start researching, research, you know, all the videos on our channel, all our blog, all about this and, and how to get ahead and hedge and become resilient and independent and out, remove yourself from the system. Whether it's bail-ins, them shutting down banks, telling you how much you can get out of banks, this is all coming, it's already happening. But it's gonna speed up and it's gonna happen more and more. So what are we doing to prepare for it? This is just one of those ways, getting to Bitcoin, getting outside the system, food, water, energy, <clears throat> your money, being resilient outside the system. Go start deepening your pantry, go start getting independent, because this is the time to do it. The less that we are reliant on the government, the less power they have and the more power we all have. Again, this will only make you better moving forward, a better investor, a better human, a better family person, you name it. Stay strong. Appreciate your time and energy. It's the most important asset we have. We look forward to seeing you on the next one.